Okay, I want to take some thoughts uh, before we observe the Lord's Supper from 2 uh, Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 is Paul's last letter. He's about to become a martyr. He's going to die because of his ministry for the Lord Jesus. And it's very fitting that he dis- he discusses the believers suffering persecution for the sake of the Lord Jesus. And he directs those that suffer for Jesus to not forget that Jesus suffered for them. And as a result of that, he died and rose again. Second Timothy chapter 2, listen to this. Paul says, consider what I say. And the Lord give you understanding in all things. Chapter 2, verse 7, then verse 8. Remember, remember that Jesus Christ from, uh, that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. I'm in prison because of it. But the word of God is not bound. Isn't that wonderful? We're about to partake of the Lord's Supper. And the Lord's Supper is a remembrance. It's to help you and I remember. One of the things that uh, we are told prior to sitting at the Lord's table and eating of the Lord's Supper is we're first of all to look at ourselves and make sure that there is nothing Nothing between us and the Lord that, pre- that would prevent us from eating the Lord's Supper. Number one, you've got to be born again. You have to have a personal saving relationship with the Lord or you're not qualified to eat the Lord's Supper. Secondly, if you're born again, you have to be in fellowship with the Lord. There cannot be any known sin that separates between you and the Lord in your fellowship with Him. All right? So, I have to bring that to your attention. But really, the Lord's Supper isn't looking at yourself. It's looking at the Lord. It's remembering Him. In fact, listen to the the words that Paul gives us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning in verse 12. He said, When he had given thanks, speaking of Jesus, he break it, that's the bread, and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Notice this, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup when he had stopped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do as oft as you drink it, Again, note, in remembrance of me. We're to remember Jesus. That's why we pause periodically and eat the Lord's Supper and sit at the Lord's table. It's to help you to remember Jesus because you know what? It's so easy to forget the awful suffering that he endured. It's easy to forget the power of his resurrection and also the imminent or the any moment coming that he is going to appear for us. That's what the Bible says it's also about, that we remember his death till he come. Dropping down to verse uh, 26, you do show the Lord's death till he come. So, my point is simply this. Every facet of a believer's life should point to remembering Jesus. You and I don't think nearly enough every day about the Lord. We don't think nearly enough. And the Lord's Supper is to remind us of Him because He means for us to remember Him to the point that Jesus impacts our life, our day-to-day life, every moment of it. And if you don't remember the Lord throughout the moments of your day, then you don't remember the Lord enough. And I admit I don't. 
This is why we're having the Lord's Supper. It's to remember Jesus. The Lord's Supper reminds us that His suffering, His suffering leads to glory. It reminds us that, uh, that His seeming defeat actually ends up in being victory. We remember Jesus when we sit at the Lord's table because the Lord's table is important because we forget that Jesus, after he suffered, rose again, ascended to heaven, and he's sitting on a throne right now. He's on the throne of heaven, the throne of God, and he's coming for us at any time. And too often, we only remember about Jesus when the pressures of our day are such that we need him. You know, I remember as a child, my wife also, when we were in elementary school, in public school, we used to uh, have the opportunity to purchase U.S. savings bonds. Some of you remember that too. And, uh, you know, you could, you could uh, build them up in $25 bonds over a period of, of time. Well, uh, at, the, at the end when my wife and I were married, she had a whole bunch of uh, these U.S. savings bonds that uh, she uh, saved up when she was a child. And when we had a pressing need for a vehicle, we cashed them all in. <laughs> we bought a car with the U.S. savings bonds. But you know what? Otherwise, she and I never even thought about our savings bonds. I mean, they were in a safe deposit box somewhere. You know, and we never even gave them a second thought until there was a financial need that was pressing. You know what? I'm afraid that that's how we live our life with Jesus. I'm afraid that it's like he doesn't really enter our minds a whole lot until there's a pressing need in our life at the moment. That's not how we're supposed to live as Christians. It's not that we look to him, we remember him when we're in a jam. How do you remember Jesus in your daily life? Do you remember him? And how, do, how can you train yourself to remember Jesus? You've got to make him your focus. You've got to always focus on Jesus. And you know what? To do that, that's an intentional choice that you make. To focus on Jesus is an intentional choice. To remember Jesus is not to remember an event. It says here in that verse, remember Jesus who died and rose again. Jesus of the seed of David who died, who rose again. When we remember the resurrection, for example, we're not remembering an event only. But I think primarily we should concentrate on the fact that we are remembering a person. Remember when Jesus was dealing with uh, Martha after the death of her brother, and she comes to him, oh, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus says, uh, uh, he'll rise again. And she says, yeah, I know, he'll rise again on that day, uh, on the resurrection morning, on the resurrection day. And he said, Martha, listen to me. I'm the resurrection and the life. In other words, the resurrection is not an event. It's a person. Without the person, there is no event. See? And so when we do the Lord's Supper, we remember his death till he comes. We're remembering Jesus, and we're remembering that the, that the death and the resurrection, it's a person. That's the thing that makes his death different from any other death. Who is he that died? Well, he's none other than the God of heaven. He's the eternal God. That's why his death as a person makes such a big difference. And not only that, because of who he is, what did his death accomplish? Well, it accomplished something that no other person's death could ever accomplish, right? He accomplished forgiveness for whoever will believe. Every human being is a lost sinner really damned on their way to hell, condemned for all eternity. But Jesus already took all of that condemnation, all of that damnation upon himself. And, be, and because he is God, he can do that for you. And he can do that for the world. 
And so that's why we have the Lord's Supper. We remember not just an event, he died, but we're, we remember who he is that died and what he accomplished through his death. We remember Jesus instead of focusing on ourselves. You know what? Even, even believers that live for the Lord often focus too much on themselves. I know I do. And here's what I mean by that. I think, uh, I think too much about myself instead of the Lord. Like, okay, what's your mission? Um, it's easy to be self-focused in our Christian life. Well, how am I doing in my Christian life? Uh, what am I learning? Uh, how is my prayer time going? Uh, uh, you know, how, is, how can I get back in uh, good fellowship again? Uh, how did I gain victory in that particular area of my life? What does God want me to do? I mean, all of those may be legitimate questions, but I'm afraid that we spend way too much time thinking about those things that pertain to us instead of remembering Jesus, which is what the Lord's Supper is really all about. It's not about us. It's really about Jesus. It's about his sinless life. It's about his substitutionary death. It's about the, the power of his resurrection. It's about his glorious ascension and enthronement. And it's about his promise to return. In fact, again, in verse 26 of that 11th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians, every time we eat the bread and drink the cup, Paul says, we show the Lord's death till he comes. And the word show there is the same word that is used in other New Testament passages to, uh, that is translated to preach. We, preach. we preach the Lord's death. Let me encourage you. Instead of preaching to other people all the time, preach to yourself. Let me encourage you to preach Jesus to yourself. When you fail, preach Jesus' death and his forgiveness. Preach the resurrection power that can give you victory over sin. Preach Jesus to yourself. When you feel discouraged and you long for change, preach Jesus' return. Preach his soon coming. Preach the hope that we have in him like we talked about this morning, the resurrection hope that we have. Remember Jesus. Always focus on him in all facets of life.